Hey guys, it's me, Kimberly Clark, and welcome to this, my 10th anti-haul video, aka, what I'm not gonna buy. What I'm not gonna buy. Before we jump into this video, I just wanted to let you know that I have a Patreon campaign now. I have a whole video explaining Patreon and all the rewards and things that you can get from it. Please check it out. I'll put it in the cards. If you believe in me in any capacity and you have the extra money, please go over to my Patreon page and consider making a per video donation. If you give $3 per video, you get to watch all of my content before anybody else. Anyway, please, please, please just check it out. I'm gonna stop, stop selling myself and start unselling some makeup. I, it's been 10. This is number 10. It's my 10th video in this series. If you're not familiar with this series, please watch my last anti-haul video where I give a little overview of what this is. Also, please check out my recent video from my March on Washington. I got to speak to Reverend Billy amongst all these other amazing people. And he is kind of like one of my favorite anti-consumerist, uh, you know, spokespeople out there. So if you want to meet him, check out that video as well as to see my experiences with like 500,000 people marching for human rights in Washington. And we're going to keep marching. We're going to keep doing it. Keep on keeping on. Related to that is being a smart consumer. And related to being a smart consumer is resisting some of the consumer hype. So welcome, we're here, we need help, I'm here to help, I'm hashtag here to help. Let us jump into this 10th anti-haul. Okay, the first item that I will not be buying, you guys, this is like those NARS blush palettes from my last anti-haul video. I want this. Like, I I really want this. This is the Chanel Camellia de Chanel Illuminating Powder. Poudre Illuminatrice de la Chanel Rose de la Camellia. Some of you may remember the uh, Camellia de Plume highlighter, which came out. It was like a Chanel limited edition situation from a couple winters ago, I think. It was a kind of icy, frosty, beautiful highlighter with like a little bit of sparkle in it, I think. And uh, some of you remembered that, that I had talked about, you know, feeling regretful about not buying it forever and ever ago. And one of you sent me an Instagram message and was like, oh my god, you, have you heard about this new, uh, the new Chanel Camellia? It's a very light, like the last Chanel Camellia de Plume highlighter, but it's like got a kind of like rosy, peachy, beautiful undertone to it. You know, like the Makeup Forever fu Pro Fusion Light Fusion highlighter that I love, that like gorgeous, kind of like peachy, rosy. <gasps> this is basically that same on-trend highlight color. But you know, I, I looked at it, I stared at it, I made an Instagram story about it. I have looked at the embossing, I have stared, I, my soul has been sucked into the vortex of this camellia embossing flower thing, but I'm not gonna buy it, and here's why. Um, this is $70. It's 70, it's 70, it's 70 dollars. I can't let myself be sucked into the glittery shimmer vortex because I, I, I simply cannot afford this. I already have products that are gonna do this. I have other highlighters. If you want to see me talk shit about like highlighters in general and like hear me anti-haul like a lot of highlighters, then check out my anti-haul video where I'm exclusively anti-hauling highlighters. I also have an all about highlighter video where I talk about my highlighter collection, my favorite highlighters, like what I love about a good highlight, you know, stuff like that. And I, I, I talk about in both of those videos, like, you know, the subtle undertones of highlights are not like so super readable, legible. They don't really translate that well. Like, I'm not a super fan of, like, collecting tons and tons of highlighters of slightly different undertones just to have, you know, more. Like, no. Look at this glitter look I did today. This is amazing. Are we talking about the undertone of the highlight with this? Hell no! I also know that if I spend $70 on a highlighter, I'm not going to travel with it. 
Because if that shit breaks, I've already had a Chanel break. Like my lipstick broke. The whole, the thing broke out of the tube. Like, I don't want that to happen. I would not want that to happen with the thing I spent $70 on. And frankly, I'm a klutz. I break shit in my house all the time. Even if I don't take this highlighter on the road with me, I'll probably break it. And am I gonna feel like shit after spending $70 on a highlighter already? Yes. Am I gonna feel even shittier when I break that $70 highlighter? Yeah. You know how I'm not gonna feel shitty? By not buying it and therefore not breaking it. I don't need it, I'm not gonna buy it. A voix Chanel. A plus. A tout alors. This is an entire collection by Lorac. Or Lorac. 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 This is the Lorac Beauties Who Brunch collection. We gotta talk about the name. We gotta talk about the name. I'm so sorry. I mean, here's to the beauties who brunch. Everybody laugh. Where is Patti Lapone when we need her? Beauties who brunch? What? First of all, I know that the whole ladies who lunch reference is gonna be lost on most of the people who buy this product. That is a travesty in and of itself. Second of all, that song's about like destitute, rich, alcoholic women. Like that reference is like not, like what? No, especially because like you look at this collection and it's like pastelly, young, fun, and you're like, Elaine Stritch sings this song? What? So first of all, we've got this buildable blush trio situation, buildable blush, and like a green highlight. Um, I know everyone's doing the tone, different color tone highlight situation. This one seems like a little, like I thought it was a color corrector. When I looked at it, I was like, oh, is that a color? Oh, no, it's a blush. Oh. And then it's got this I Heart Brunch Pro eyeshadow palette for $44. I like their eyeshadow formula. I've tried the Pro stuff before. Very soft, very malleable. Reminds me of Kat Von D, but maybe even more powdery and pigmented. Like, I think Kat Von D, my favorite eyeshadow formula, kind of strikes this perfect balance. Lorac, just a little too buttery for me. Anyway, this is 16 shades. They've got some, like, minty... There's a lot of mint. Okay, there's a lot of mint happening. And you're gonna hear me talking about another eyeshadow palette later in this video where I'm gonna criticize it for maybe not having enough pastel things. This has a little bit too much pastel, and it's also, like, pastel plus neutral, but, like, the weirdest kind of pastels. And especially with the Pro Eyeshadow Formula, which is already, like, a little, like, powdery and chalky, when you have the shades, like, actually look like sidewalk, Walk chalk. I feel like the association is just like, I'm putting sidewalk chalk on my, like, I feel like I would be overwhelmed with the reference is just like a little weird. Like, I don't need like a powdery, chalky, mint eyeshadow, you know? I feel like this, like, the colorways of this just like missed the mark. You know, everyone's done like the orange, like Morphe 45O, like, orange is the new black, yes, yes, and now it's like, mint is the new orange? No. L stop trying to make mint happen. Kimberly Clark. Your pastel runway look wasn't meant to be. Next! Next! This is the Josie Marin Nirvana Hydrating Treatment. Josie Marin is, uh, she's got the argan oil, she does the whole argan oil skincare situation, argan oil everything, argan oil lip gloss, argan oil whipped foundation, argan oil whipped whatever, whipped cream, I don't know, argan, argan everything. This is some argan, I think I'm, there's gotta be argan oil in it because it's her whole jam, but it's, it's a spray. I actually saw this watching a recent Carly Bible haul. She's a Jersey girl, hi girl, hi Jers, what's up? She talked about this and was like, I thought this was a setting spray, it's not a setting spray. It's actually a post cleansing preparation spray. And I'm like, uh, is that a priming spray? Like, is that, is that what that is? But it's like, no, you put it on after you cleanse, but maybe before you moisturize, and then therefore before you prime. And I'm just like, no, 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 no. Hold the phone. Stop in the name of Argon. You are adding an yet another freaking another step, another step? No, do not open this door. Then it's gonna be like the post eyeshadow pre lipstick spray, post dinner pre bedtime spray, the post binge watching Stranger Things pre drinking yourself to sleep spray. Like, no, like we cannot let these companies invent new steps in our, no, no, we've got, these things exist already. You could use any freaking spray as a post cleansing spray. You could use your Mac Fix Plus as a post cleansing spray. Anything could be a post, use freaking water. 
as a post cleansing spray. I often use tea tree water as a post cleansing spray. I spray my face with some tea tree, and I made it. I just added a couple drops of tea tree water to some water in a spray bottle, shook it up. Boom! I got my own post cleansing spray and I didn't spend $38 for it. What? Post clean? No. We already have too much shit we have to do. We already have to moisturize, prime, uh, bake, setting spray, spray this, spray it. We need, we have all these spray, we have so much shit we have to spray. Now we have to spray another freaking spray on our spray break. No, I don't need it and I'm not gonna buy it. Josie Marin Nirvana, so, uh, y never mind, never mind. Get it? Because that's a Nirvana al- Do you get it? You don't- That's a Nirvana album. I'd like to share a little story with you from my new favorite book. It's Kylie's Diary. A wise old friend once told me that 2016 is the year of realizing things. And I realized a lot in 2016. And I realized that I'm not gonna buy any of this bullshit. What? A diary? You guys- Kylie Jenner is a real person who has a real makeup company who is really marketing their makeup to you as if you were a five-year-old girl. Like this are her diary? I mean, the eyeshadow shades in this are kind of interesting. Pink, poppin', shimmery something, maybe. Blushes, boring. Boring, we've seen it, not interesting. Not interested in that at all. But the diary? Listen, if you're a young millennial, maybe you have a deep kind of connection to Kylie Jenner that I don't understand. Uh, maybe you do. Uh, may you might. And if you do, and you feel like you can explain it to me in a polite way, try to try to describe it in the comments below. Because I'm gen I'm genuinely in I'm genuinely interested in this. Genuinely. But honestly, if you're like me and you're like a thirty-something person, I'm not gonna buy Kylie's diary. I can't. I can't do what. Uh, first of all, a diary is supposed to be yours and yours alone. This makes me believe that Kylie Jenner has not ever kept a diary. That she thinks of it as some kind of ethereal concept that one can sell to other people. No, no, I don't want to read your diary. Your diary is your diary. I want my own diary. I want my own. If Kylie's diary, if it was like Kylie Jenner presents your makeup diary and it was about like you making your own world and story, weaving your own narrative through your own diary. I'd support that. I don't want to buy Kylie's diary. No! I have to just say no when the marketing is just so dumb. When it's just so dumb. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't care how good the product is. When the marketing is so dumb, I gotta say no. I don't have enough money. There's not enough, there's not enough time for me to buy stupidly crafted ideas like Kylie's diary. Nope, I don't need it, I'm not gonna buy it. I don't wanna read it, I don't want it on my face. Okay, finally. So Kat Von D is my favorite eyeshadow formula. I love her shadows. I use them in this look. I hit pan on the matte black shacks from the Shade and Light Eye Contour Palette. Look, oh my God. I've already hit pan on this guy, uh, and I just hit pan on. I love her, I love the shadows, love them. But she came out with these two palettes recently and I'm not gonna buy either of them. First up is the Alchemy palette. This is a Sephora exclusive, I think. It is a $32, I think you get five shades of Transformer Topper Highlight shades. It just doesn't seem to be like that, like practical a product for what I wanna do. And what I do is like opaque, full coverage, full color, like painting, like canvas, stucco, fresco, Michelangelo on the face. We got the birth of Venus. We got a Modigliani, Modigliani, Modigliani situation. We got a lot of paint, there's fresco, there's these are basically made to do two things. One, use as a face highlight. Two, use as a transformer to top off like another eyeshadow or something. I guess part of the marketing of this is like, save money on other eyeshadows and just use this to transform your other eyeshadows into new eyeshadows. Theoretically, I'm like, okay. Okay, that makes sense. I mean, yes, a way to turn one product into multiple products. That sounds like a great money-saving idea. 
But honestly, when you start using these on top of things and like doing different combinations and stuff, they all kind of look the same. The subtle difference, just like in all, like my rant about highlights I talked about earlier in this video, like same deal, like the slight colorful tone shift. Are you really gonna notice it that much? Is it really gonna like, if you if you use the green shade on a green eyeshadow base versus the bluey shade on a green eyeshadow base, is it really gonna look that much different? I don't think it is. This is something that maybe, if you're obsessed with doing a duochrome transformer topper situation. If you like that process, if you like putting a translucent, shimmery, duochrome shadow on an existing eyeshadow or color, or just using it lightly and having it be a kind of like wispy shade, either as an eyeshadow color or as a highlight, then maybe this is good for you. I'm not into that. When I put eyeshadows on my eyes, I want them to be full color, full coverage, be the color that you want to see in the world. What? Be the color that it like represents in the pan, right? I don't want to then have to add another shade to like play with the undertones and tweak it or something. No, it just seems like a lot of work and I really don't think I'm, I would reach for it that much. It might be something that I would get and be like, oh, interesting, do a couple looks with it, but then be like, really, honestly, if I want like a pretty eye look, maybe I'll just pick a pretty eyeshadow instead of like an eyeshadow that I kind of think is boring. I need just like a little kick and then add this on top of it. No, I'm not gonna do that. I want the shadow to just do it for me, you know what I mean? And then as a highlight, these, like, they don't work as face highlights because the pans are too small. It's an eyeshadow palette. It's small. It's like a little illumin... It's a little in illuminati... Illuminati... Triangle thing. It's small. It's too small for to use as a face powder. Cora from Vintage Attacky. Hey girl, love you. Woo! I feel like hers is a great video to watch. Products talk about them in a positive way. Watch her video because she's very practical. Love her. She's amazing. Her, and they work for her. Like she loves it. But she did say that her one criticism of the Alchemy palette is that the pans are so small. Like you can't dip into that and get that crazy, beautiful green cheek that you want for some reason. Anyway, no, I don't need it and I would not use, I just won't use this. I know I won't. So that's why I'm not buying it. <sighs> then, then this happened. I have a pastel palette that I love. It is a really old palette. It's from Lime Crime and it is the De Antoinette palette. It's got mostly matte shades and like one crazy silvery shimmer shade. This is pastel. Like I understand these colors. When I think of pastel, I think of Easter, you know? Pastel. And so I was like, okay, that the this pastel goth palette is gonna be just like that. It's gonna be the same kind of colorways as this guy, but in my favorite eyeshadow formula, I'm gonna love it. It's gonna be great. I'm, it's gonna be fabulous. Then I saw the pictures of it. And I was like, girl, what? First of all, there's a bright yellow in that. That's not a pastel yellow. There's also like no pink. There's no pastel pink? What? Every Easter rabbit costume that you're forced to wear is pastel pink. That is the, you put that, that's pastel. I know people have been like, no, this is technically pastels because a pastel is a desaturated color. Sure, I, whatever, you, technically maybe, yeah. I don't think of this as pastel though. This looks like desaturated primary colors. I think they're pretty colors, but I don't, I honestly, I just like, they don't, they don't jump out and say pastel to me. They just look like desaturated, like kind of faded eyeshadow. Like when you put it on, like it looks like you had a brighter blue eyeshadow and it faded. Like that's kind of what it looks like. It doesn't look like a light blue. You know what I mean? Like it looks like faded. But I feel like this, it was that phenomenon where you have high hopes for a product. You have, or not even high hopes, you have like an idea. You prejudge something. It's called prejudice. That's what it, that's what prejudice is. You prejudge something. I had a prejudice about this palette where I thought it was gonna be one thing and it wasn't. And so that's, that's why I'm not gonna buy it. That's enough. I think that's enough. I think that's enough. Yeah, that's enough. But so I, so it wasn't what I, my dream palette. It might be your dream palette. If it is, go for it, buy it. I love her shadows. I'm not dissing that, but I'm just bummed. I wanted it to be like the ice cream, Neapolitan, awesome, pastel. Easter bonnet palette of my dreams. And it's not. Sorry, I don't need it and I'm not gonna buy it. And it's, it's just not perfect. And that's what I require. Perfection, obviously. I mean, is this getting a little greasy? It's hot. It's like 80 degrees, it's February. Luigi Yana! Ah, oh, that was my 10th anti-haul video. Thank you so much for watching. Please check out my other videos. Give me a subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Why not? You're here. You like this stuff. Come on. If you really, really like me, again, 
go give me some dough. Give me some dough on Patreon, baby. Do it. Also, I have a P.O. Box. I don't know if I mentioned that. I have a P.O. Box. If you want to send me shit, if you don't want to donate money to me, that's that's fine. I don't care. You don't have to, you don't even have to send me shit, but, but if you want to send me stuff, you can send me stuff too. You don't have to do that either. Don't you have to do anything. You can just watch my videos for free. It's fine. And I just want to give a huge, huge thank you to my 84, maybe 85 now, maybe 87, I don't know, backers on Patreon. I appreciate you so much. I cannot express how this like slight shift in like finances like helps me. It's so important. It's uh, really something that like facilitates me to be able to do more of this and be able to justify, you know, taking time from other projects to do this stuff, which I actually really love doing. And I know you like it too. So thank you. Thank you so much. And there's so much more. I'm so excited. I'm so happy to be here. And it's thanks to you. Yay. Okay. Um, I think that's it. That's it. That was my answer. Are we done? Are we good? How's the lipstick? I will put a link to the get ready with me for this look when uh, I upload it. I think that's going to be after this video, so you will see it down below. It'll be there when I when I upload it. A lot of glittering. A lot of glitter. It was fun. Aren't I glittery and gay? Glitter and gay. I'm Kimberly Clark. <laughs>